everybody, and uh, welcome back to the Blu-ray Hunter. I'm the Blu-ray Hunter, Jonathan Moody, and we've got a fun, fun show for you guys. It's a Blu-ray Hunter Reviews show again. Um, so this is happening pretty much almost every Monday. If there skips a Monday, it's just because I got too busy and wasn't able to do one. But I'm planning on recording a bunch ahead of time, so we'll see. Um, but I just did this one. This one's ahead of time, so here we go. Uh, I am talking about the 1985 film Moving Violations, um, and I'm really excited. See, Moving Violations from Kino Lorber. Now, I wasn't planning to do another Kino Lorber. You know, we did uh, we did Gotcha last week, and so I, I was like, eh, should I do another Kino Lorber movie or or whatnot? But decided why not? And it's because um, I tried to watch this movie. Yes. Mm. Uh, tried to watch Capone and uh, got dreadfully bored and I needed something to pick me up so I went looking through all my stuff and found movie violations which I hadn't given a review to and decided that would cleanse my palate it would it would not at least it would entertain me if it weren't even if it weren't a great movie it at least entertain me and I will tell you this, I was thoroughly entertained and I laughed and I I enjoyed it. It's basically Traffic Academy, like, you know, Police Academy and Traffic School, uh, directed by Neil Israel, who did Bachelor Party and Police Academy and a ton of other movies. He comes back together with Pat Proft, who uh, was in, uh, who, who co-wrote, uh, Police Academy and all the like David Zucker type stuff like Naked Gun. Um, there's a character in the movie called Norberg. No, no, there's an actor in the movie called Norberg. And um uh like I think his name was like Greg Norberg. And uh I was wondering if that was maybe the uh basis to uh Nordberg, which was um was his name? O.J. Simpson's character in the Naked Gun movies, and I thought that was interesting. That actor Greg Greg uh, Norberg also act, uh, acted in Bachelor Party and a bunch of other stuff for the guys. So that's awesome. Um, basically, the what I what I read was that the guy who played Captain Rowe, um, he was he had uh, like got asked to be um the uh, what is it uh, um. Commandant Lassard, and he turned it down, and so he decided to actually act in this movie, and basically to um, counteract that, to because he because he felt bad for for turning that one down, and it became a pretty good <laughs> police academy. I mean, became a franchise. This unfortunately did not become a franchise, and I honestly, from the title, I don't think they could make a moving violations too. You know, but if they had called it Traffic Academy, they could have they could have done two, three, four more of them. Um, I don't think this did as well as Police Academy did, and it didn't like Police Academy. I mean, didn't just spawn seven sequels, but also spawned like two different uh, TV shows. One was a live action, one was a cartoon. Uh, it you know it also spawned like. Video, you know, I don't know if they did a video game, but I know they did like um, action figure type stuff and uh, accessories and, and merchandising and all that stuff. But um, yeah, Police Academy was my like favorite series. Now, it's seen uh, moving violations. This is not completely new to me. However, it has been since I was like a little kid, you know, because when I was... Um, when I was in, uh, what is it, like, I want to say middle school or something, I was going around and, and buying all the Police Academy type ripoffs. There was a movie called Off Beat um, that was like a Police Academy type of thing. It was set in police stuff. Um, I just rewatched a movie called Combat Academy that looked familiar, so I might have seen it. Um, I, th there's a ton of these things and I love them. You know, like I said, this should have been called Traffic Academy. I don't know why. I guess they didn't want it to sound too similar to 
uh, police academy, but it's it's police academy. Like it's literally beat for beat police academy's uh, movie kind of thing. Like the beginning of the movie where you, you sort of see all the different characters and then how they get into uh, traffic uh, school. And then you, you know, you have the one, you know, this one is James Keach, but then, you know, Police Academy was G.W. Bailey, who wanted all the people to basically fail. And that that's the big part of uh, Police Academy is that, you know, they wanted these people to fail, you know, or whatever. They, they did not want them. They wanted them to quit. You know, these were misfits who did not need to be in the Police Academy. Um so this was, you know, basically they can't quit traffic school, but they were going to fail them because the judge, played by Sally Kellerman and James Keach, uh, both have a um, uh, an agenda to uh, rip off the people's uh, cars because they're in the impound until they you know, get the, uh, till they get out by traffic, uh, from the traffic stuff. I wonder about that though. Cause like, from what I understand, when they keep your stuff in the impound, it, it costs money every day that it's there. So Jesus Christ, there's like, I don't know, it was a while that they were in there. So I wonder if they had to pay that a lot of money after, uh, the whole idea, I guess, is that, uh, James Keach is in sort of a relationship with two women. He's in a relationship with the judge, like as a secret, and he's also in a relationship with the uh, deputy, uh, who does a fantastic job. Uh, and I didn't even mention, of course, there's, um, and there's uh, was it uh, John Murray? Yes, Bill Murray's younger brother, who pretty much they wrote it for Bill Murray. You know, like this, this was Stripes, this was uh, Ghostbusters, this was everything that uh, Bill has ever done, you know, as a kind of thing, <clears throat> the way that he acts, the way that he holds himself, he, he uh, there's a young Jennifer Tilly, um, there's Brian Packer from, um, you know, Fast Times for Richmond High, there's a ton of fantastic, ooh, by the way, it was in Police Academy 4. So I have no idea if, like, if that was because of this movie and he just, you know, went on there. But uh, it was kind of cool to see that, you know, he was in this movie. Um, There's a lot of great actors. There's the, where's the Beef Lady is right behind me right there. Um, There's a ton of these uh, fantastic actors. And I just loved re-watching this because it, it was just fun. It was just a cute cute story about these guys who these all these misfits who sh you know who shouldn't be together uh ned eisenberg i think that's his name um he was in uh he's in like the law and order movie air uh, shows and he was in like law and order special victims unit i think he plays like a lawyer all the time he's kind of scummy he uh in in the show but in this he's got a full head of hair so it's a very much a scary character, and he's uh, he's all everything he talks about his movies. Kind of reminds me of me, you know. I, I could identify with him. Um, I was like, shoot, do I do that? You know, like if that dude, if that character were, you know, around right now, he'd be making podcasts about movies just like me. You know, it just it would be the talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre and all these other movies that he loves. Um. But yeah, so that was I mean it it was a fun movie. It Neil Israel and Pat Proft are great at writing like these goofy stories where the misfits have to figure out how to win in the end. And I won't say how they win, because if you haven't seen it, go buy it from Kino Lorber. Like I said, it's uh it's on Kino Lorber. There's uh there's that. And then if you look in the back, there's no reversible art, right? think so no but if you look at the back it's got a commentary by the director and i listened to a, a little bit of it and uh apparently the movie was uh had had been come up with because uh 
Joe Roth, the producer, was like, can you make a movie about uh, traffic school? And um, Neil Israel had been to traffic school a few times, so he could relate. I had never been to traffic school. I don't even know. I don't know if they even do traffic school anymore. Uh, but yeah, um, it was funny to see that the that Jennifer Tilly played like a rocket scientist. There's um, there's a lot, a lot of just little fun things and and just like police academy you get to know all the characters and they all have their own separate lives and there's the um the woman there's a woman who is in um uh back to the future played like linda mcfly and she's in a few of the other movies unfortunately she passed away in like 2005 i want to say by breast cancer but she played um uh, this woman who heard that the uh, one of the guys, Fred Willard, I love, uh, I think he also is no longer with us. Um, I could be wrong. Let me look that up. I don't want to wish somebody or say something about somebody before I know the truth, but I think, yeah, he died in 2020. Oof. Bad year. Um, but yeah, so. Fred Willard plays this like uh diagnostics uh car guy. You know, I don't know why he's in there. Like he shouldn't be go having to go back to traffic school if he's like that into cars. Um, but he does come into play heavily later. Um but he um is uh he's chatting with the girl from um that plays uh, Mc Marty McFly's sister, uh, and uh, he's chatting with her, and she is a um, uh, sh she's thinking about like because she's a hypochondriac, she's thinking of all the stuff inside her, and he's uh, <laughs> telling her um, that it uh, basically he's kind of. He's talking about cars. She's talking about her body. I don't I don't want to say too much more. That's it. That's all I have to say. He's talking about cars. She's talking about her body. She thinks he's a, an actual doctor. She is a doctor of cars. He, uh, yeah. Uh, he's talking about a rear end. But he's talking about the rear end of a car. And, uh, and she's taking it um, in a different thing. And I thought that was one of the best best scenes, best stuff, you know, to come from the movie, honestly. Um, I, I think it's a, the sign of a great movie when you have an ensemble cast like that and every single person has a character. Like, there's some kind of development with each and every character. Um, you know, Jennifer Tilly or, or Brian Packer or, you know, or, or John Murray. All of them have some kind of uh, stuff going on, and you follow them and you enjoy watching them, you know. And that to me is a sign of something that is really good. And Police Academy had that because you know, by the end of Police Academy, you've met all those people, you know, all of them, you can quote their lines. Um, this had a few quotable lines, but I think what I didn't like about it as much is that, like, it did not have as many like it wasn't as laugh out loud funny as police academy once again i think that might be the problem with it is it just didn't have that apparently they wanted um michael j fox to play the john murray role that would have been different um i i don't um as much as he later on went to do back to the future and became huge even bigger than he was um he just wouldn't have worked in the comedy that they did necessarily um but john did because he's very much like his brother uh bill he's able to basically do all these goofy goofy lines and make it so uh he's just funny um so i like them i like i like all the murray brothers i i just i love john murray and i love all of those 
all the actors in this movie. I think everybody did a great job. James Keach, um, who was very much known for dramatic roles, did a fantastic job uh, playing this kind of uptight, but sometimes not so uptight, especially when he's around the judge. Um, he's doing some crazy stuff with her. They have like some bondage stuff going on in the movie. Um, but to me, that uh, he was he was great. He's Stacy Keach's brother, so he has Stacy Keach's brother and Bill Murray's brother in a in a movie together, and they're both like, kind of going you know um, head to head. And I thought it was hilarious. It was a lot of fun. I think you'll enjoy it. Like if you haven't if you haven't seen this movie, uh, please go take a look at it and uh yeah i think you'll enjoy it all right so with that being said uh thank you guys for checking this out uh next week probably be another kino movie i have a feeling i know which one i want to do um aside from that after the after september when we go into october it's going to be spooky movie time so we're going to do i'm going to do four uh horror films maybe five if there's five mondays i'm not sure four or five mondays uh whichever amount but four or five movies um you know horror films that i have not seen so i want to want to watch them and review them uh for you guys so hope you guys enjoy that um also check out my uh channel horror film lovers um i think you guys will like that channel as well uh i I do a lot more reviews on that for horror films and stuff. And I need to do more stuff other than horror films for that channel, but or reviews um, for that channel, but we'll see. Anyway, um, hope you guys enjoy this little mini review and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it and I can't wait to uh, dive in more to the commentary at some point. So till then everybody talk to you later. Bye.